So if I say, for example, Hamim, or I say Qaf, Qaf, everyone will listen carefully, wondering, what does that mean? What does it refer to? Then the message, if I say SWT, you would say Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if I say PBUH, you would say peace be upon him. We know the meaning behind these letters. But if I say Alif Lam Mim, do they have meanings? Yes, they have meanings. What do they mean? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told all human beings, you have the same letters. You have Alif Lam Mim. You have Ayn Sim Qaf. You have Qaf, you have Noon, you have Ya and Seed, you have Ha and Mim, all the Arabic alphabets with you. But why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them at the beginning? Insha'Allah, we will learn today all the details about the meaning of the disjoined letters of the Quran. Like Alif, Lam, Mim, Ha, Mim, all praise be to Allah. And peace be upon Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today we will talk about the disjoined letters in the beginning of the surahs of the Quran. For example, in Surah Al-Baqarah, you will find at the beginning of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif Lam Mim. And in Surah Yaseen, it starts with Yaseen. Surah Qaf starts with Qaf. And Surah Noon starts with Noon. Surah Maryam starts with Kaf Ya Ayn Sad. And Surah Shura starts with Hamim Ayn Sin Qaf. Other Surahs starts with Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Mim Ra. So what is the meaning of the disjoined letters at the beginning of the surahs? You would find some people say they have no meanings. But if they have no meanings, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them at the beginning of the surahs? So others would say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows their meanings. Yes, that's true. But why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them at the beginning? Insha'Allah, we will learn today all the details about the meaning of the disjoined letters of the Quran. Like Alif, Lam, Mim, Ha, Mim, Qaf, Kaf, Haya, Ayn, Sad, appear at the beginning of 29 surahs in the Quran. Scholars have long pondered over their meanings. And while the exact meaning remains only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Let's go through the points of view of the Muslim scholars. It is a divine challenge. It is a challenge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Arabs who were known for their eloquence and mastery over the Arabic language. Despite their expertise, they couldn't produce anything like the Quran. By beginning some surahs with these seemingly disconnected letters, Allah highlights that even though the Quran is composed of ordinary letters of the Arabic language, no one can replicate its divine eloquence and depth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenged all humans and jinn. If you claim that the Quran is not the book of Allah, produce a book similar to it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, قُلْ لَإِنِ اجْتَمَعَتِ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَا يَأْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ ظَهِيرًا It was a challenge to all humans. If you claim that the Quran is not the book of Allah, produce a book similar to it. And if you fail, it means the Quran is Allah's book, not a human's. And they failed. They couldn't produce a book similar to the Quran. The second challenge was easier than the first one. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, If you think, if you have doubt, if you claim that the Quran is not the book of Allah, produce only 10 chapters similar to the Quranic chapter, meaning 10 surahs. The Quran has 114 surahs. Only 10 surahs produce 10 surahs similar to the Quran. 
and they failed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in the Quran. Or do they say he invented it? Then bring 10 surahs like it that have been invented and call upon for assistance whomever you can besides Allah if you should be truthful. So they failed to produce 10 surahs similar to the Quran. Then the third challenge and final challenge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it even easier to show them that this book is not human words. It is Allah's words, the creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So nobody was able to produce anything similar to the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the final challenge reduced the demand to only one surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and if you are in doubt about what we have sent down upon our servant Muhammad, peace be upon him, then produce a surah like it and call upon your witnesses other than Allah if you should be truthful. Did they produce one chapter similar to the Quran? You know, one chapter means three verses. Did they succeed? No way. They failed and couldn't produce even one chapter similar to the Quran. So the disbelievers of Mecca, despite being masters of the Arabic language, couldn't meet any of these challenges. This fact solidified the belief among early Muslims and even their opponents that the Quran is divinely revealed beyond human ability to replicate. Therefore, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, highlighted the miraculous nature of the Quran in several hadith. One notable narration recorded in Sahih Muslim emphasizes its unique divine speech when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Every prophet was given miracles because of which people believed. But what I have been given is divine inspiration, which Allah has revealed to me. So I hope that my followers will outnumber the followers of other prophets on the day of resurrection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told all human beings, you have the same letters. You have alif, lam, mim. You have ayn, sin, qaf. You have Qaf, you have Noon, you have Ya and Sin, you have Ha and Mim, all the Arabic alphabets with you. If you claim that the Quran is not the book of Allah, use the exact same letters that the Quran is written from and produce even one chapter, one surah similar to the Quran. But they failed and they couldn't. And it shows you that nobody can write it as it is without any mistake. And nobody can produce anything similar to the Quran. The same letters we use in our daily life, use them and produce a book similar to the Quran. So here we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put these letters at the beginning of these surahs to challenge human beings. And it will remain until the day of judgment. It shows you the miraculous nature of the Quran. These letters remind the listeners that the Quran is constructed from simple letters, yet it is far beyond the human capacity to produce a similar text. This ties directly into the Quranic challenge issued to mankind. But what does these letters mean? Nobody knows their meanings except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say the word but rather mention the name of the letter like Alif, Lam, Mim. He didn't say Alam or Asaq, but instead he used the names of the letters. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Ayn, Sin, Qaf, the name of the letter. For example, if I say USA, does it have meaning? Yes, you would say it means the United States of America. And if I say UK, you would say it means the United Kingdom. If I say SWT, you would say Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And if I say PBUH, you would say peace be upon him. We know the meaning behind these letters. But if I say Alif Lam Mim, do they have meanings? Yes, they have meanings. What do they mean? You don't know. Only Allah knows their meanings. Kaf, Haya, Ayn, Sad, only Allah knows their meanings. Also, these letters are signifiers of attention. They are meant to grab the listener's attention, preparing them for the divine message that follows. 
you know if we hear something we don't understand we become attentive we will be quiet and listen for example if i say something and nobody knows what it means everyone will listen attentively to figure out what it means for example allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says alif lam mim everyone gets quiet and listen what is this then after that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is the book about which there is no doubt a guidance for the believers so if i say for example hamim or i say qaf qaf everyone will listen carefully wondering what does that mean what does it refer to then the message follows these letters at the beginning of the surahs take our attention and make us concentrate so we listen attentively to know what is coming next so these letters are signifiers of attention there was a man called another one of the worst enemies of the muslims he traveled to persia to gather stories and legends to compete with the revelation of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam he wanted to prove that the Quran is not special, that he could make something similar to it, stories similar to those in the Quran. If Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam tells us the story of Thamud, the people of Prophet Lut, or the people of Prophet Hud, or if he mentions the story of the people of the cave, the story of Dhul Qarnayn, or the story of Prophet Musa and Al Khidr, this man wanted to prove that he could do something similar to it. However, when he returned, he attempted to narrate these tales. When he came back, he started to tell people the stories of Persia, the kings of Persia, and the people of the Romans, but they paled in comparison to the profound and divinely inspired verses of the Quran. Despite his efforts, Nadr failed to produce anything comparable to the Quran's wisdom, eloquence, and depth. His eventual failure further proved the truth of the divine challenge. His story is a vivid example of mankind's incapacity to meet the divine challenge presented by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah guide us and make the Quran beneficial to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the Quran the best companion for us in this life and in the afterlife. Jazakumullahu khairan for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.